Hello everybody and welcome to another technical episode of Cloud Adventures. I am Ettore and I am a solution architect with AWS. Today I'm joined by the CTO of Neuralove, Ilya. Welcome, Ilya. Thank you and hello everybody and thanks for having me. For this technical session, I'd like to dive into one of your AI platform product, that is AI Art. Can you explain me what it's about? Sure. Um, AI art is definitely a buzzword recently, but the idea behind this is that thanks for latest AI technology, you can create new artwork from basically nothing. Uh, there is a myriad use cases to that, including fast prototyping, personalized art, inspiration, and digital assets creation. Oh, it looks amazing. Can you introduce to me the architecture? How do you realize it on AWS? The user journey starts with them accessing our Lambda backend via browser interface, which is hosted on S3 and CloudFront, or via API. Then this request is being analyzed and sent to incoming queue, which is being sent to Elastic Container Service. Then ECS always has a group of spot instances that are all, always ready to process new requests. Um, it takes anywhere from 10 seconds to a minute to generate a picture. And then these pictures are being stored in S3, being checked by a moderation service, and then uh, they are being sent to another queue that is sent data to DynamoDB and notifies the user. Thank you, really interesting. I know that in your law, one of your priority is data quality, and also you mentioned automatic content moderation. Also, you're reaching 2 million registered users, that is quite a lot. So how do you ensure that all of your customers do not generate inappropriate content? That's a great question. I think ultimately I want my daughter to be able to use our service and don't want to worry about her. So in addition to other measures, we sent all generated images to AWS recognition service. And thanks to it working instantly, we at the moment of generation, we already know if we should blur this image or not. And this is just one piece of complex system we've built to prevent abuse of our service. Thank you for sharing that. Who is in the AI field knows that one of the main challenge of generative AI is related to resources. So how AWS helped you to match the resource demand and at the same time optimize costs? Yes, with video enhancement, we used a really simple approach. We just launched one server per one task and we were really able to predict how much it would cost us thanks to AWS pay-as-you-go model. But with a generated art, it's not that simple. The overhead of starting each new server is too big. So we needed to have servers constantly available uh, to be able to pick up new tasks. And uh, for businesses such as ours, the demand is really hard to predict. It can go up and down really quickly. So what we did, we used auto scaling that looks into the working queue and uh, scales up when the demand is high and scales down when it's low. But that experience wouldn't be full without using spot instances. These are interruptible servers, and uh, they can be shut down at any moment. Thankfully, we got a message two minutes in advance to stop receiving new requests to this server, and it can be safely shut down. And overall, that helped us save up to 70% of our costs. Speaking about the future, I'm curious to know how do you plan to improve your offerings? First of all, we want to focus on quality improvement. We found a clever way of doing that without compromising generation time. Then we want to focus on AI image editing. And we got an access to AWS Bedrock Preview, and we hope to use it in our moderation service and in our future LLM projects. That's great. A lot of interesting features. As a last question, I'd like to know if you have any advice on for who wants to enter this new and high competitive market. I think being cloud native really helped us from the beginning. It was the right decision for just a small team of three engineers, and we spent very little time on our infrastructure. And I really like how AWS works together and all services are just as well play orchestra with the SKS load triggering auto scaling with just 50 lines of configuration or AWS recognition working with S3 files. And uh, when you're cloud native, it means all your files are already in S3. And overall, cloud nativeness brings us efficiency, short time to market, and honestly just makes my day brighter because I don't need to think about managing Linux server or MySQL database ever again. Thank you very much, Ilya. It was a really interesting use case. Thank you, everybody, for watching this episode. And if you want to know more, please visit neural.love. See you in the next episode.